Greetings, my fellow educators. My name is Nikki Mohan, and I will be your host today. Today, I will be talking about authentic assessment. But before we begin, I want to welcome you to the Committed Sardine channel. know it and in many or most cases has not changed or if it has very slightly. Assessments rely on giving a score telling us how our students are doing and then us teachers telling parents how their child is doing at school. These exams were administered as a gauge of how students were performing hence the results were used as performance indicators for the individual or class. The point I'm making here is that this was the final measure, once off, one shot. The bar was set and you either cleared it or not, passed or failed was the result. With that short blur, I want you to take a moment and think about what does assessment mean to you? Okay. Now think about this for a moment. Why is this? And now think about how do you assess? And now think about what you do with the results or outcomes. And finally, how else are those results used? In this session, we look at different forms of assessment as well as how to choose the most appropriate assessment type. We also examine the need for authentic assessment, what it involves, and how this type of assessment is a more practical approach requiring a more hands-on involvement than traditional assessments. For most people, educators and non-educators, the terms assessment and grading are often used simultaneously or interchangeably. But are they the same? It is important that we clarify what these terms mean before diving deeper into our topic. To help us do that, we ask the following questions. What is the purpose for grading? And what is the purpose for assessment? Think about that for a moment. The goal for grading is evaluating student performance, awarding a score, symbol, letter, etc. The goal of assessment goes a step further. Assessment tracks not only student performance, but also student learning and utilizes the, da the data for teaching and learning. So very quickly, I want you to think about some of the different assessment types that you are familiar with or ones that you use or just know or heard about. In this session, we will look at the three major categories, diagnostic, formative, summative. I think other assessment types, labels, are part of either one of those three categories. First, diagnostic. What is it? Diagnostic assessment is an initial assessment or also referred to as pre-assessment. Because this type of assessment is usually performed at the beginning of the year or semester, a new topic, a new class, a new cohort of students, what purpose does it serve? With a diagnostic assessment, we get a snapshot of students' knowledge at that particular point in time. Second, summative. What is it? Summative assessment is a post assessment. It usually occurs at the end of a semester, the year, a unit of work. What purpose does it serve? 
summative assessment is used to evaluate and measure student learning against standards which may be state, country or some set benchmark. This is a final assessment that determines individual student achievement. Third, we have formative. What is it? This type of assessment is carried out during a lesson, unit of work, during reading, math, etc. What purpose does it serve? Formative assessment is like a checkpoint where the teacher checks for student understanding. Performed during a lesson at regular intervals, during the learning journey in other words. Now that's a very brief definition or description of each of the three assessment types. To help us gain a better context of these assessments, I'd like to use a medical analogy. When we visit the doctor for some illness, ache or pain, the first thing he does is ask a whole bunch of questions. The reason he or she does this is to gather more information about the symptoms we are, we are presenting. In other words, the doctor is using these questions to make a diagnosis, exactly like a diagnostic assessment. We are trying to make a diagnosis regarding our students, their pre-existing knowledge, their strengths, passion, etc. The doctor gathers all this information and then, based on his diagnosis, he prescribes treatment, which could include medication, exercise, physio, etc. In exactly the same way, we teachers use the diagnostic assessment to group students according to their ability, reading levels, interest levels, etc. Now back to the doctor. After the diagnosis, the doctor may suggest that we take some medication and follow his prescribed treatments for a period of about, say, three months. But in the meantime, he will need to do a checking every month to see how we are progressing. This is exactly what formative assessment is about. It is a way for teachers to check in regularly to see how their students are getting along with set tasks. Then, after the three months, we have a final assessment with the doctor who asks a lot more questions to gauge how the treatment went and how we are doing, improvements in pain, symptoms, etc. Summative assessment works in the same way. After a set period, we test students to see how well they have performed at the end of a unit or term, etc. Now, an important point to consider is that these assessment types can switch roles. For example, a summative assessment can act as a diagnostic assessment. Let me explain. A teacher can use the previous year's summative assessment at the beginning of the new year to group students in the same way that a diagnostic assessment is used. In this instance, it depends on the purpose for which the assessment is being used. Likewise, a formative assessment or more especially a collection of formative assessments can be used to support a summative assessment. As I said, it comes down to the purpose that basically gives the assessment its label. Okay, now I want to focus on authentic assessment. During our Literacy is Still Not Enough series, we talked about the need for teaching and learning and assessment to change. And for that to happen, we need to shift our traditional mindset about teaching, learning and assessment. Because the future is here, the idea that change is happening is old news. We need to acknowledge that using 20th century teaching, learning and assessment models and approaches will not be enough to resolve 21st century problems. Trying to improve traditional pedagogy will not allow us to equip learners with the problem solving, innovation, critical thinking, communication, collaboration and creative critical thinking skills increasingly needed to operate in an increasingly changing world. The future of education and our children depend on what we can do now 
to ensure that our students are ready to meet the future head on. We need to teach today for tomorrow and beyond. As you are aware, traditional education systems place too much emphasis on standardized testing, testing that not only focuses on one particular type of intelligence. Most standardized tests strictly measure analytical intelligence and ignore practical and creativity-based intelligences completely. The mission of education must be to prepare learners for their futures. Futures that require them to develop the other two types of intelligences just as strategically. This is one of the main purposes of using authentic assessment as promoted by the modern fluencies. The fluencies promote learners becoming competent in all three types of intelligences. Authentic assessment involves a more practical approach requiring more hands-on involvement than traditional assessment types. Authentic tasks replicate real-world challenges and standards of performance. That experts or professionals, for example, mathematicians, scientists, writers, doctors, teachers or designers typically, typically face in their field. Future-focused learning includes utilizing authentic assessment approaches which evaluate both the process and products of learning. These types of evaluation are carefully crafted to provide students, teachers, parents, and other stakeholders with performance data that informs decision-making and supports students' success both inside and outside the classroom. To get a deeper understanding of authentic assessment, please watch the videos in the Literacy is Still Not Enough series. Rubrics is an example of authentic assessment. A rubric is a scoring tool that definitely communicates the required performance expectations for a learning task, assignment or project. A rubric dissects the assigned work into different components called criteria. It must provide clear descriptions of the characteristics of the work associated with each criterion and varying levels of performance. In essence, rubrics attempt to take away the subjectivity sometimes practiced during the assessing process by providing a clear roadmap to success in an instructional activity. Let's use an example that will illustrate the difference and summarize our discussion. If you wanted to learn ballroom dancing, you would need a lot of practice. In other words, you would need to do it. Yes, you will learn by watching, observing, by looking at some theory, but in order for you to go to the next level, say from a beginner's class to an intermediate level, you will need to demonstrate your learning by showing your competency. Now, the same thing applies to learning math, social studies, civics, history, language arts, etc. Now, while we can clearly see that authentic assessment is very beneficial in so many ways for teaching and learning in modern times, we must not ignore the fact that authentic assessment presents many challenges as well for both teachers and learners. In this session, I briefly discussed different assessment types and took a closer look at authentic assessment and why we need to adopt this approach. You may already be using this approach without even knowing it. However, going forward, I want you to consciously and deliberately use this approach when designing your assessment for a unit of work. Please let us know how you got on in the comment section below. Your comments are a valuable part of this process. By sharing your thoughts and experiences helps us all learn. Thank you so much for joining me for this tutorial on authentic assessment. Keep an eye out for other sessions that we will be posting soon on various topics that will help you enhance your daily teaching and learning practices. Please give us a thumbs up to let us know you enjoyed the session. Also remember to hit the subscribe button and the bell icon 
so that you are notified when we upload new videos and what new is happening on the Committed Sardine channel. Thanks for watching. See you soon.